to the Podcaster's Guide to the Conspiracy, brought to you today by Josh Edison and Dr. M. Denton. Hello and welcome to the Podcaster's Guide to the Conspiracy. Another good cork nose. Is that a new bottle? I've been getting so well, good. It can't be well, that new. No, it is fairly empty. I don't know, you might have decanted it into I'm something that gave better, better cork I'm, noise. I'm getting better at popping. Fine. Well, the popper of the cork is, of course, Dr. M. R. X. Dentith, hitting the scotch from the looks of things, and why, yes. why not? Uh, maybe it should have been so schnapps or not, something to fit. Why not them. try to pronounce that? Auch Roisk. Not even close. No, I see what is it. Is it, is it Welsh or something? Is Gaelic. It like, is it Orisk or something? Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Right, second try. Uh, but no, it should possibly be, be schnapps or something a bit a little more Teutonic to fit in with the theme. I of... do have German and I do have German ancestry. What I should be drinking here is a good Bavarian beer. Mm. I have ancestry from Bavaria. Mm. Yes, because of course we're 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 heading back to Germany uh, and th- those those wacky Nazis. They're at it again. Coming and, up with and, conspiracy theories. And we're theories. going to be talking about nominally good Nazis today, aren't we? Well, I mean, nominally good. Nominally good Nazis. We're going to be talking about uh, the Nazis who tried to kill Hitler. Well, some of them anyway. Turns out there were quite a few Nazis who had a crack at Hitler. Yeah, it turns out that Hitler actually was kind of opposed by quite a lot of the aristocratic Nazis yes. for reasons we'll go we'll into. into. And probably the Nazis who weren't too fond of plunging the country into a world war and rounding up people and sticking them in camps and what have you. Well, Probably yes. some of them as well, I don't know. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about good Nazis. Yeah, the ones, the ones so good they get played by Tom Cruise in a movie. Yeah, this is... Uh, so if you've watched the film Operation Valkyrie, which is Valkyrie about... Tom, oh, yes, no, you're right. Uh, which is about Tom Cruise trying to kill Adolf Hitler. Mm. Basically, we're going to be talking about that. Yeah. And So have you seen Valkyrie? No. See, I have. Ah, is it actually good? Yeah, it actually is a gripping film. And it's kind of interesting to see Tom Cruise playing a Nazi and not trying to make this person out to be this noble character. He's still a Nazi. He's yeah. just a Nazi who wants to kill Hitler. Yeah. Does he try an accent or do they all just do? I can't recall. And mm. now I'm thinking, I think Valkyrie was directed by Brian Singer. Could be. Which is its own kettle of worms. Well, yes. But anyway, so we're not going to be talking specifically about the movie. We're going to be talking about the events that the movie was based on. Do we um, do we have any any sort of place setting, administration y announcement y stuff before we get straight into it? No, we do, we do not. Know. I think we go straight into talking about Nazism again. Yay for Hitler. I'm sorry, no. 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 no we're not going out on yay for Hitler. <laughs> no, we're not going. I mean, for, for giving being such I a mean, fair, no. for a good However, source of conspiracy had you gone theories. Springtime for Hitler. Right. Then we could have gone into the producers and that would have been fine. Right, okay. We actually used to, there's a, a restaurant tray restaurant chain. Restaurant chain. I haven't even started the whiskey. No. A restaurant chain in Eastern Europe. I actually think it's found elsewhere in Europe as well, but I saw it mostly in Romania and in Bulgaria called Springtime. Mm. And every time I walked past the Springtime, in turn I was going, Springtime for Hitler. Right. Springtime for Hitler. Springtime for Hitler. Important news update, there is actually a film called Operation Valkyrie. But it's not it the just Tom isn't Cruise the Tom Cruise one. one. The Tom Cruise one is in fact directed by Brian Singer. Yep. Um yes, yeah, so obviously not not when I say hooray for Hitler, I don't like 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 could we be clear that Hitler is bad? I'm, we can be clear. We, I, th- I, th- I think it's fair is to bad, state unequivocally. Was bad, and I suspect will continue to be considered to be bad unless the alt-right actually do succeed in taking over mm. Western civilization. So Nevertheless, this episode might a- age poorly in about 10 years' time. Indeed. Nevertheless, good source of conspiracy theories. When he wasn't coming up with them himself, people were, were plotting conspiracies against him. Uh, quite a few of them, apparently. So I, I had a quick look. That they, there's, there were enough of them that they've got their own page on Wikipedia. There are assassination attempts of Hitler, and it's not These a short Nazis page. These Nazis have really made it. They've got their own mm. page on Wikipedia. Starting even, even, like even before uh, 
the start of the war, people didn't like Hitler, and so there were various either attempts to have a go at him or plans to have a go at him that never actually worked. But um, I guess the one that came the closest to succeeding, and from the looks of things only really failed due to, ex uh, due to chance, um, was this one that gets referred to as Operation Valkyrie. Although Operation Valkyrie wasn't really no. the conspiracy to kill Hitler, wasn't it? No, it, it was, was the contingency plan as to what would happen if the Führer was killed. Mm. Yeah, so Operation Valkyrie itself um, was basically a, a contingency plan um, made by the Nazis, signed off by Hitler, uh, for how the German Reserve Army could basically take over the country um, in case of the breakdown of civil society, uh, which would generally happen if, if Hitler had been killed say, or, or something say else. Particularly, the Chancellor was mm. dead. The Chancellor being Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Um, so it was an official. It was it was an official Nazi plan. It was the structure put in place. If if everything goes pear shaped, the army can not exactly stage a coup because the, the, the this is arrangements that the the army that the government has well, put in place for themselves. So the army would a take coup over from occurring when the chancellor mm. died, basically. But it was then sort of repurposed by a bunch of German officers to to stage a coup. Essentially, this was the plan. They would kill Hitler. With Hitler out of the way, they could then sort of invoke Operation Valkyrie, which would allow the army blame to take, outside blame forces, outside forces for the death yep. of Hitler, which would allow them to say Operation Valkyrie comes into effect. And who better to lead post-assassination of Hitler Germany than these high-ranking Nazi officials mm. who in no way were responsible for the death of the Fuhrer. It's a very clever plot. It is, yes. I mean, we, we get a bit of false flag into it as well. It's This conspiracy theory keeps getting better and better, and by which better I mean worse. Um, but no, there, there was a... Um, uh, the, the script of this announcement that was going to be given, I, I think this script, this was prepared by these conspirators as the, the thing that they were going to announce when they enacted Operation Valkyrie. Um, it had a, had a whole big list of orders. This is basically orders that would be given to the army to tell them what to do, but it was going to start. The Führer Adolf Hitler, this would be in German, I assume. They pro probably wouldn't. Yeah, it would be a bit, in, yeah, it'd be a bit it strange be, if they announced in English to their, to their soldiers. Although if it wasn't English, it would be impeccable upper-class mm. English accent, as we know from British war films. Obviously. Uh, we do, uh, I, I don't see we can avoid the, the Nazi general Smith & Jones sketch coming into, into this at some point, because there are going to be a lot of Nazi generals. Involved. Oh, yes. So just warm up your, warm up your accent for that. Uh, but no, this announcement was going, was, was going to start... The Führer Adolf Hitler is dead. An unscrupulous clique of party leaders alien to the front has attempted, under the exploitation of the situation, to betray the hard struggling front and to seize power for their own selfish purposes. And would go on to basically tell the, the, the brave soldiers of the Wehrmacht to, to, to basically let these guys uh, do whatever these guys tell you to. Um, but of course, for that to happen, Hitler had to die. And the reason why Hitler had to die, not just be arrested or, you know, shunt, kicked out of the country or something, was because there were only two people with the authority to, to invoke Operation Valkyrie. One of them was Hitler himself, and the other one was General Friedrich Fromm, who was the commander of the Reserve Army. Who is going to be an interesting mm. character in the story. Yes, because he's a major figure. Fromm... Turns out to be one of those people who was a little bit agnostic as to whether he thought Hitler was a good idea, and was one of those generals who could basically sway different ways depending on which way the breeze was blowing on a particular day. So he was the general who changed sides frequently, not the general who would pick up the telephone and say, GET ME THE FUHRER! Who, which Nazi general would you have been? I would have been the laid-back Nazi general who doesn't bother to salute properly. Uh, see, I'm definitely the Griff Rhys Jones uh, okay. Nazi general. If you don't know what we're talking about, look up uh, Smith & Jones' Nazi general sketch. It is the funniest sketch uh, Mel Smith and Griff Rhys Jones ever did. It's probably actually the only funny sketch in retrospect they well, ever did as well. Know. I haven't really looked at much of their other work. I just remember that one. Um, but so uh, General Fromm was, was the guy they needed to... And uh, so I, I should say at the start... They wanted to do it by the book, right? They they wanted they they didn't want to you know just uh, kill Hitler and then there'd be chaos 
uh, step two, question mark, question mark, step three, profit. They, they, they had a plan. They wanted to do it properly. They wanted their, the government, which they come up with afterwards, to be legitimate, basically. Um, so they needed, they needed everything to go the way it was supposed to go. And so for uh, the army to take over, Operation Valkyrie has to be put into action. For Operation Valkyrie to be put into action, General Fromm has to do it. Um, or Hitler has to be dead and General Fromm has to do it. Uh, so we come to the plot to kill him. Actually, actually, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. First, yeah. one thing I should point out, this was a big conspiracy. It was. It involved, as mm. we'll say, a lot of generals. A lot of very high-ranking mm. people. Get to I, these conspiracies. I just want to point out, is an awful lot of similarity with the death of Julius Caesar here. Mm. So when the assassins plot to kill Caesar... They also want to do it by the book. So the reason why there are 23 conspirators in the cabal of people who killed Caesar was that Marcus, Brutus, uh, Casca, etc. got all the major figures who would need to be in place in the Senate to make sure there was an orderly transition back to Republican governance involved in the conspiracy. Because once Caesar was dead... They need to they need to make sure the right procedural votes went through the Senate to ensure a return back to Republican rule. And of course, their issue was they didn't really calculate on what Marcus Antonius was going to do. And that's why their conspiracy fell down. In the same respect, the Marcus Antonius of this story is going to be our general from. I think so, But yes. we'll get to that mm. after we talk about the uh, very large number of people who turn out not to be Tom Cruise in this story. Mm. So, I mean, the, the key figures we have... Um, the, the, the guys running this were, were high-ranking officers in the German army. We have a General Friedrich Ulbricht. We have a Major General Henning von Treskau. Uh, and Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, Tom Cruise. who was played by Tom Cruise. So he's the one who we'll see was sort of instrumental in the actual bombing attempt that almost managed to kill Hitler. Um, so these were guys, uh, there's also General Ludwig Beck. Um, he was in there. These were the guys who were sort of leading the coup. These were the guys who were planning to form the government afterwards. I think the plan was that Beck would be uh, president. Um, Stauffenberg would be the Secretary of State, I think it was, yes. Um, so these were the guys, but... Um, there were a lot of people in it. Uh, once again, there's a whole Wikipedia page of people who were, win, were in on Operation Valkyrie. There were lots of them all throughout the army and indeed outside the army, which, as we'll see later, uh, we, when, it, when everything went uh, went pear-shaped and people started getting rounded up. Led to a, a lot of deaths. A lot of, a lot yeah. of deaths. Um, so there we, so th 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 that, was the, that was the plan. We would kill Hitler. We would put Operation Valkyrie into effect, take over the country, uh, disarm the SS, get rid of the Nazi party, end the war, was the plan. Unfortunately, the plan didn't really go according to plan. plan. No. Now, the date of the actual attempt, that is kind of the focus point of our story, is the 20th of July 1944. But that was basically their last attempt, mm. because throughout 1943 and early 1944, they had been trying quite desperately to get Hitler and his co-conspirators in the government, you might say. Mm. Uh, so we're talking about our Himmlers, and our Goebbels Goerings, seem to be the two. Uh, and Goebbels mm. as well, in a situation where they could take them all out at the same time. And they had various plots as to whether they were going to shoot them or whether they were going to blow them up with a bomb. And there were actually several attempts... Mm. But these attempts were, they weren't very successful, were they? No, I mean, or there were plans. Often they didn't get to the stage of an attempt, really. Um, there were plans to sort of get someone close enough to Hitler to shoot him, uh, get someone close enough to Hitler to plant a bomb and blow him up. Um, and either they, they, well, basically none of them worked out. Uh, most of the time, because they planned, we'll get this guy to see Hitler, but... Um, as we've said, there had been a bunch of assassination attempts on Hitler already, and so Hitler was quite justifiably quite paranoid. Um, so he was always guarded. He basically stopped 
taking visitors, essentially anyone he didn't, he wouldn't see anyone he didn't know. So first of all, you had the obstacle of we, you know, we here's our man on the inside. We want to get him up to to you know sneak up behind Hitler and shoot him. Well, that just didn't happen because he couldn't get close to Hitler. He wasn't ever going to get into um, get the opportunity. Then it was. Um, you know, we need to get in somewhere, plant a bomb. Well, again, no one can get close enough to Hitler to plant this bomb. In and also the fact of... that they didn't want to engage in a suicide bombing. Yes. They wanted to be able to go into a room, leave a bomb behind, walk out to safety. They weren't really willing to sacrifice themselves mm. for the greater good. Yes, I believe there had been instances where they'd sort of suggested, well, you know, for, for the good, why don't, why don't you go off and become a suicide bomber? Why don't you go off and become Basically, a suicide bomber? Yeah. And because we're talking about these people, we're kind of the kind of I'm the upper the Nazi crust. who tells other people mm. what to do. These were these were not the guys to, um, especially you know, given that they were the, 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 these guys, the the um, the heads of the conspiracy, were planning to form the government afterwards. They presumably considered themselves to be indispensable. Yes, they were the kind of people who thought they were indispensable to the cause. So anyway, enter Klaus von Stauffenberg. Tom Cruise! So uh, the, the, we, had, we had a von Stauffenberg. Who was the other one? A von Treskau. Uh, von, of course, being a, a, an aristocratic, ti aristocratic title. Um, so a lot of the officer class was sort of former aristocrats. Um, and this was part of their motivation. That the, In uh, Nazi-era Germany, well, post-World War I, really, the, the aristocracy had been... They were actually made to, to give up their vons. I understand. You weren't allowed to be uh, a von Stauffenberg. Von Stauffenberg. A von you, just had, you just had to be Stauffenberg. That was sort of, and so they, part of it was that they kind of, you know, wanted a return to their former glory. Also, they did think they were born to rule. Well, yeah, basically. And Hitler Stuff wasn't, had gone wrong wasn't from the right class. Nazis, yeah. Um, so uh, Klaus Stauffenberg slash von Stauffenberg, um, he had been uh, wounded in Africa, I think, because in the movie he has the eye patch and everything, doesn't he? He had lost an eye, he had lost bits of both of his hands, I think. Um, was was convinced the war was a bad idea, Hitler needed to go. Um, so sort of around 1942, apparently, he had come to the decision that we've got to do something about this Hitler chappy. Um, joined the conspiracy in 1943, and then um, when von Treskow got assigned to the Eastern Front, he Basically essentially took, took over. over as the ringleader. Mm. So, so then the plan was. Uh, oh, sorry. The, the the key thing came in on the first of July. Uh, Stauffenberg was appointed chief of staff to General Fromm. So now he could go wherever Fromm went, and Fromm was one of the people who could actually get in a room with Hitler. Yeah, because so Fromm was your trusted by Hitler. Fromm's aides were presumably trusted by Fromm, so transitivity allows mm. von Stauffenberg to be in the same room with Adolf Hitler. So on July the 14th, uh, they made their first attempt. He had a bomb in a suitcase. He was in a room with Hitler. But they wanted to get Hitler, Himmler and Goering all in one go, and the three of them weren't in the room, so at the last minute they called it off. And I don't know, I think in the movie he's very pissed off about that, isn't he? Yes, and in the movie it's kind of a attention thing of getting the bomb out of the room before it blows, mm. because the worry is Hitler's not in the room when it's likely to blow, so if they only kill one of the lower ranks then Hitler's going to be much harder to get. Mm. Now, whether that's actually how things went down in reality is another matter entirely. Yes, I don't, supposedly on, on the 14th, I think Hitler was there, but Himmler and Goering weren't, and so they thought, so they called it off, and Stauffenberg, I, from the sounds of things, argued the point fairly, fairly um, fiercely that, God damn it, we could, have, we could have got him and you pulled me out. So, so they, they, they said, OK, fine, fine, fine. As long as we can get Hitler, then we'll, we'll go ahead with it. We don't need to get the other ones. It would just be nice if we can. So on the 14th, he had, uh, sorry, on the 15th, he had another try. Um, the three of them were in a room. But then Hitler was the one who got called away at the last minute. So they had to call it off again. Yeah, I think in the film, they basically make those two events the right. same. Right. Um, and so finally, on, now, now, as we said, the, the conspiracy was fairly large, and so there was sort of the possibility of, of loose lips sinking ships. And as we said, now, General Fromm was aware of the conspiracy, but not actively a part of it. So he wasn't, he wasn't involved in any of the plots. But, but he also knew wasn't, about yeah, he it wasn't going around telling Hitler yeah. about the conspiracy either, because he was kind of agnostic as long as there was continuity of power. Fromm wasn't particularly concerned about who was Chancellor at any particular point mm. in time. 
but apparently the Gestapo was starting to close in on them with, with the number of people, you know, th th things were, were starting to get out, there were investigations being conducted, and so they were starting to become pressed for time. Um, so finally on the 20th of July, uh, we had the situation where Stauffenberg was able to plant the bomb in a room right next to Hitler, the bomb went off, and Operation Valkyrie could proceed. Except... It turns out that between von Stauffenberg going into the room and planting the bomb and Hitler sitting down where the bomb was meant to be, someone moved the bomb. Mm. Someone said, oh, what's that damn suitcase doing there, briefcase there in the way, shifted it around to the other side of the big, they were sort of sitting at a table with a big, big sturdy leg, um, so that when the bomb went off, Hitler was partially shielded from the blast, and although I think sort of three people were killed and everybody in the room was injured, Hitler was not among the fatalities. However, the conspirators weren't aware of this. No. The blast went off. They assumed that given Hitler's proximity to where the bomb was meant to be, and also the reports that people had died, that Hitler had been killed by the bomb, and so Operation Valkyrie was invoked. Mm. So um, Stauffenberg immediately legged it and tried to put as I think tried to put as much distance between him and the the area as he could, so he couldn't have been uh, be blamed for it. Uh, General Ulbricht, one of the the head um, conspirators, basically you know went to Fromm and said, "Look, look, Hitler's dead, so go, go for it." And Fromm was like, "Well, okay, hang on, I don't, you know, let, no, no, you've, Fromm, you've got to do this now. Mm. You've got to." And Fromm's go, I, I, "I have to make some phone calls." Yeah. So it very much sounds like Fromm wanted to make sure he didn't end up on the wrong side. If he announces Operation Valkyrie and then it turns out Hitler's alive, then he's going to look mighty silly indeed. Um, so he, he made some calls and eventually received word that Hitler was in fact alive. So I believe, I believe some of the conspirators had actually had been going out themselves and saying, you know, Operation Valkyrie can go ahead, go for it, guys, go for it. But but only Fromm could give the official word. And so then eventually there's, and I think this I think this was also a scene in the movie where the the one of the sort of head generals of the reserve army ends up getting put on the phone with Hitler himself, so Hitler can say I am not dead, at which point he's like, right, you're okay, yep, definitely we won't be doing the Operation Valkyrie thing. Um, so yeah, the fact that it was still alive kind of meant that um, the conspiracy was was buggered basically, and, and a lot of people yeah. were in a lot of trouble. And the thing was because of that. And the realisation that the Gestapo were going to engage in a fairly vigorous investigation as to what went on, from basically sells out the conspirators mm. almost immediately yep. and tells them exactly everything that he knows, which then means that some of the conspirators being aware the Gestapo are close on their heels commit suicide, and others, like von Stauffenberg, get captured and then executed by the Gestapo very, very quickly. Mm. Yeah, so I think Fromm, who didn't know the exact details of the bombing, was able to put two and two together and realise it was Stauffenberg who'd done it. Um, and then, yeah, he refused to invoke Operation Valkyrie, tried to get the people arrested. They, there was some sort of a scuffle, and they ended up detaining him and holding him at gunpoint. But then once everything fell apart and Valkyrie wasn't going to happen and everybody was aware that there'd been this plot to kill Hitler, which had failed, um, yeah, he immediately had the conspirators rounded up, tried, convicted and executed. Uh, Toot sweet, I suppose. What's German? So fought. Now, immediately. Yes. the Kasapo arrested 7,000 people yes. and executed 4,980 because the great thing about a conspiracy to kill your leader is it also justifies a purge of mm. other undesirables you've been meaning to get rid of but haven't had enough reason to do so. Yes, so um, Hitler, as you might well imagine, wasn't too pleased about almost having been killed. Um, and yeah, so he said was really the, fussy about He was, didn't, didn't like his bombings, that guy. No, no he didn't like no, people no. trying to assassinate attempts, him. Not, not the kind of thing he, he was He was willing into. to give orders to kill off an entire, entire ethnic group, but... You try to kill him and he gets really paved. Mm. So he, he put the Gestapo onto it straight away. He said, Just get everyone, get all of them, round up the entire damn lot of them and we'll, we'll be done with it. Um, so the, the head guys, as we say, from had seen to it that they were, were had been tried and executed straight away, basically before they could drop him into it and put on a great show of how loyal he was to Hitler and how... how, um, how 
concerned he was at rooting everybody out. But yeah, 7,000 people, it, it has been basically said that yeah, not all of these people who were arrested and what have you were actually in on the conspiracy. There was a lot of score settling and a lot of yeah, purging of people who they'd been looking for an excuse to do it. Including Fromm. Because the problem with mm. Fromm's story is that he knew too much. He did. Which then led to people going, you seem to have known about plots against the Führer and you didn't tell us about about those plots, so it's good that you've sold out the conspirators now, but it's also bad that you didn't sell them out before they made the attempt. Mm. Yeah, so essentially he it, it, it became clear that he was, if not part of the conspiracy, then at least in on it. And um, yep, so he was one of those 4,980 executions. Apparently, um, <clears throat> The only concession he got was that Hitler, Hitler personally ordered that he be executed by firing squad, whereas most of the conspirators were hanged like common criminals. Yes, the firing squad at least was a military was, death. It was a military death and a, a quote-unquote honourable death. Um, but uh, yeah, not so lucky with most of them, including apparently Erwin Planck, son of, of uh, Max Planck, he of the, the Planck constant, Planck number, whatever it is, the, the famous such um, a physicist. Great band. Hmm? The Planck constant. Is it? I don't know what reference you're making there. I'm just saying, sounds like a name of a great band. Planck hey, we're the, uh, we're the Max Planck constant. And so that was that. So, I mean, this is, you, you, I'm sure you've heard about this before, even if you hadn't heard about the Tom Cruise movie. It's sort of the thing that, that I'm, I'm sure I first heard about this on like Ripley's Believe It or Not or something many, many years ago. When now Ripley's hosted by Bruce Campbell. It is actually, yeah. But this, was back, this was back in the Jack Palance years. Oh, now that mm. was someone with a great voice. Yes. Uh, I remember, you know, it's just, it's this story people like to tell. You know, if, if it hadn't have been for that one guy shifting the briefcase into the wrong spot, Hitler would have died in July of 1944. And then who the hell knows what would have happened? What would have happened? Probably not much. So it is true that most of the conspirators thought that Hitler had got them into a costly war in Europe, which they would win eventually because the Nazis did think that they were going to be the winning side. But it was going to be one of those long protracted things. It would be much better for Sue to peace now. Sue to peace? Sue for Sue peace. peace. Keep the holdings you've got in Europe, allow the Third Reich to basically stabilise and have peace treaties with foreign nations. But there's no clear indication that this would have been a, we're going to give up everything which makes Nazism Nazism. Mm. It would simply be, we'll stop the war and we'll be happy with our holdings as we've got them now. Yes, I mean, these people, as we've said, they were aristocrats, they were the upper classes, so the government that they formed would have doubtless been a very conservative, very authoritarian, very sort of born-to-rule style government, and the, you know, as we say, they'd written up their whole plans, they, they, they'd thought this all through, they'd, so, so we know what they were planning to, how they were planning to negotiate, negotiate peace with the Nazis, and People who've looked at what their demands would have been had they got the chance have basically said the Allies never would have gone for that. That was it was basically um, it was basically make Germany great again, really. Yeah, I mean it was, it was we will keep everything that we've conquered and you won't ask us to return back to our natural mm. borders, which was not what the Allies were going to do, especially since they were fighting on behalf of a lot of nations which had been conquered by the Nazis since the advent of World War II. Mm. Yeah, so it was it was it was a you know let, let's just put everything back the way it used to let's be just in the good old days the last before three years of war and indeed the the war before that as well I think because they want one of the things you know obviously like like one of the reasons why the, the Hitler was able to rile up the Nazis was the whole World One uh, World War One reparations thing which nobody in Germany really liked and these guys were very much on with that so one of the conditions would have been no, no more World War One reparations. Um, yeah, they, they sort of expected to just 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 put everything back. Like just just just, just f forget those two world wars. Let's just just put everything back the way it was, and then we'll just we'll just all get on with our lives. And yeah, this pr probably was never actually going to work. No. So I mean, this is a quite fascinating conspiracy mm. theory because it's a wonderful example of a conspiracy which actually occurred. It's also a wonderful example of a conspiracy theory which was being investigated by the Gestapo as the conspiracy is being developed mm -hmm. because, as Josh pointed out, there were a lot of members in the conspiracy and there was justified worried about 
information leaking from the conspirators to other people, which the Gestapo picked up upon, so they were investigating it. And of course, Hitler was concerned about mm. various conspiracies against him. So he was always theorizing about where the next plot was going to occur. And it turned out both the Gestapo and Hitler were right to be concerned mm. because there was a massive conspiracy being launched against him. And this is just the most successful one. I mean, as we said at the start, the, the there had been others and there were possibly who, who knows if there are other ones going along in parallel well, yes, as well. because the Gestapo did a very good job of mm. making sure information about this stuff didn't really ever get out. Mm. So there you have it. I mean, there's probably not much more we can say about it that hasn't been said by, by on the History Channel several dozen times. It's a, a fascinating incident uh, and all the more remarkable that it managed to fail by accident, really. Yes, if that one, that one suitcase had not been moved, history would have been different. Mm. So we talk about conspiracies, you know, requiring a goal that they're all working towards, but that goal, uh, it, it's not a requirement that the goal actually be successful for us to be, be able to say that a conspiracy had occurred. And in this case, it was a goal not being successful in a, in a fairly spectacular yeah. fashion. One porter mm. moves one suitcase and the history of World War II is changed forever. Mm. So Which know. is the reason why you should get really good hired staff. Mm. Or in this case, but really bad hired staff. Okay. If you're going to try to assassinate someone, make sure the hired staff really don't care about the job they're doing. No. I'm not sure, even, was, it, was it the staff or was it just sort of someone who was sitting next to Hitler thinking he'd be helpful and ended up getting his so own heads blown off? I think in the film it is a waiter-like character. Uh, I, th I think I think from the notes I mean, although was, I, might, I might just be making that bit up. I think from the notes it was one of the, the, the Nazi generals or something. It was, it was someone who was I seated the at the table. I am the Nazi general who moves the sword case. Mm. So yes, apparently the guy who did it and saved Hitler's life, uh, I think he survived but lost a leg, or possibly two, given that he had a bomb explode right next to his leg. Yeah, mm. well, you know... Bad things happen in war. Yeah. I don't think we will ever, though, get to the bottom of which one of them was the Nazi general who listens to classical music while being measured for a suit, and it's also the general who says, So you see, Captain, they're not all savages. Uh, now that was Mal Smith. That was Mal Smith. The sadly departed Mal Smith, mm, mm. who is in one of my favourite film, Brain Donors, with John mm. Totoro. Is that the is that the Marx Brothers one? Yeah, right. Yeah, mm. it was actually meant to be called a night at the at the ballet, which would have made a lot more sense than the name Brain Donors. Mm. But it was the eighties, and Hollywood had particularly weird views about the naming of films then compared to even now. Well, there you go. So Operation Valkyrie, actually a really interesting conspiracy theory to talk about. Yeah. I think. Mm. Uh, but we've come to the end of the episode. Which means it's time to advertise our mm. bonus content for our bonus listeners who are our bonus patrons. Our patron bonus bonus patrons. That's the one. Yes. So we'll be talking about four interesting topics in the bonus episode this week. We've got a whole update on that whole Trump Ukraine thing, which continues to get bigger and more exciting, mm. which has actually brought in Hillary Clinton and the email server stuff, which is a resurgent conspiracy theory and kind of reaction to the conspiracy theory, was also actually being central to the reason why Trump is talking about these things in the first place. And Nickelback, I'm told. Oh, now that's something that I haven't put in the notes. I so think, you've got exciting no, Nickelback news. The, there's the, the Trump and Nickelback, a small reference, but apparently it's in there. Uh, well, then we've got an update on two local, well, yeah, update on one local New, Ze New Zealand story. The whole Lauren Southern Stephen Molyneux issue has been decided in court, and that's quite fascinating. Mm. And a professor at Otago, James Flynn, claims his book has been banned. We'll ask the question, has it? Mm. So if you'd like to know the answer to that question or hear about any of this other stuff or listen to any of our other uh, bonus episodes that we do each week, um, become a patron. One dollar a month gets you mm. access to our bonus episodes. You can do it at patreon.com. You can do it at conspiracism.podbean.com, which is where this 
podcast is sort of officially I don't understand how it works quite frankly we 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 have it hosted at one site but then it's on every service do they all get it from the same place or is it mirrored everywhere well, so basically you it's all go, a series you, of tunes yeah, as you, far you as basically I know. just link things mm. to other things I mean we're on we're, we're on, on Spotify we're on Spotify are we yeah good god you know what else is on Spotify your mum Josie and the Pussycats soundtrack it's been on Apple Music for months oh pff, Apple pff, who uses Apple's we're filming on an iPhone right now. <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you, sound, you sound like a train that's dying. Yes. <laughs> choo choo. Uh, so we're we are on Spotify. We're on we're on iTunes or Apple Music, or whatever the hell it's called now. Stitcher, Stitcher Podbean, something, other stuff, and probably a bunch of others that we don't even know about because I'm fairly certain there are a bunch of other podcasting services that scrape the major ones yeah. and helps them put them up and stuff. Um, but wherever you listen mm. to our podcast, why not give it a review? Now, most people say, why not give it a five-star review? You might not think we deserve five stars, so give us the review you think we deserve. Follow your heart. And with that in mind, um, I guess it's just time to say goodbye until next week. Indeed. Do you want to sing us out with your smell of a fart song? No, I don't. And I'm not going to. Fair enough. Josh's musical career has launched and died in the space of an hour. Goodbye. Goodbye. You've been listening to the podcaster's Guide to the Conspiracy, starring Josh Addison and Dr. M. R. X. Dentit, which is written, researched, recorded, and produced by Josh and M. You can support the podcast by becoming a patron via its Podbean or Patreon campaigns. And if you need to get in contact with either Josh or M, you can email them at podcastconspiracy at gmail.com or check their Twitter accounts, Monkey Fluids and Conspiracism. coming to get you, Barbara.